I'm not trying to be in control here. I'm trying to let it rip, like let it rip, create room for wailing, yep. create room for squealing and squirming, create room for resistance. I always talk about this being an inclusive practice, like let all those thoughts in, let them in better that they get let in than locked away in some room inside yourself. That's just getting repressed and pushed down. If there's anything that I've seen a million times over in facilitating this practice for thousands of people is permission permission to like let it out in today's busy world how can we find the inspiration knowledge and energy to live a healthy and empowered life if we balance and harmonize our mind exercise our body live according to the laws of nature and connect to spirit can we find a way to heal become our authentic self and live our purpose with love i am your hostess amy fournier and welcome back to awakening aphrodite Welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. I'm your hostess, and I'm glad you're here. This show is about holistic health and wellness, mind, body, and spirit for that matter. And we also get into how to harmonize the masculine and feminine essence that's in all of us, as well as tap into our intuition, our true source of power, and awaken our authentic self. So today's show is very interesting. I don't know if you've heard, but kind of popular right now in holistic health and wellness space about working with breath work and just the power of our breathing to access higher states of consciousness and even our unconscious in particular, which is very hard to access. You know, you've probably heard of people doing shadow work and, you know, the parts of ourselves that we repress or push down and sometimes rear their ugly head. For example, if you've ever acted some way that you like almost step outside yourself and you don't understand why you reacted that way, or somebody totally overreacts for a situation, basically has their buttons pushed and you just can't figure out why, or maybe you just keep sabotaging yourself in spite of wanting to make changes. A lot of times that can be because of repressed stuff that's inside you somewhere that somehow you're not accessing to deal with, to heal, and then to be able to move on. So breath work has become a pretty popular way for people to dive into these spaces of ourselves, because you've probably heard that most of our existence is really programmed out of our unconscious. And what we're actually conscious of is just a minute portion of our life experience. And I decided to go ahead and dive more into breath work myself. I do have experience with plant medicines and uh, uh, child regressive therapy, all different types of uh, modalities to access all the parts of who I am to help heal a lot of the things that I've been dealing with in my life. And God knows we all have our things, right? <laughs> And just like anything else, you know, some things work better than others for each individual and at different times of life. And um, I decided to, you know, learn more about breath work. What's all the hoopla about? Like, and will it be able to help me? So I've tried at different times. And again, like anything else, it depends on set and setting. The container in which you experience something can determine your, your experience and the outcome. It also very much depends on the facilitator, the teacher, you know, like if you like one yoga class, don't like the other, you know, so oh, there's a lot of factors. And, but I'm going to be honest, when I first started delving into breath work, I was like, I don't get it. Like what's going on? Everybody else is tripping out and having all these like crazy, you know, life altering experiences and healing trauma and having child regressions and all kinds of stuff. Good stuff, you know, really. And, uh, I just was like crickets. Nothing was happening for me. But I got referred to today's guest on the show, Sarah Tremoli. And, uh, oh, folks, that's when things changed. So there's another testament to, you know what? When you're looking for something, keep trying. And don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You try one Zumba class, you didn't like it too much. Maybe it was just the instructor or the music choice or whatever. Maybe you do would like Zumba if you try someone else's or at another time in your life. And... I don't know if that's a good analogy, but I'm going to go with that one. So that's pretty much what happened with the breath work. I'm glad I finally stuck in there just a few more times. And to be honest, 
I actually still don't know if I actually quote unquote did it right. And we talk about that in this, in this episode, because you know what? In fact, there really is no way of doing it right. And the fact I was trying to do it right was part of the problem to begin with. So right there was a very revealing thing for me to experience. But you're going to love today's show. As usual, I get really personal. I, ex- I share my personal experience. Open kimono here on Awakening Aphrodite, I guess. And, uh, and I share my, my powerful, amazing guest with you, Sarah Shamoli. Sarah is a master effigy breath facilitator. She's also the co-owner of Effigy Breath, and she's the director of operations for it as well. As a business leader, head of communications, and master facilitator for Effigy Breath work nationwide and worldwide, Sarah Shermoli is passionate about the transformational power of Effigy Breath work and the practices that make up the holistic program designed to support people in their personal consciousness work. Sarah has successfully organized, executed, and co-led multiple weekend intensives and programs across across the globe. She also now does online monthly classes, and that's what I participated in. It was an online class. And don't be mistaken, online can be just as powerful as an in-person experience. Again, it just depends on set, setting, the facilitator, and, uh, you know, some of those key factors. But don't rule that out if that's your only option. So Sarah is committed to the growth of each individual called to work within the framework that Effigy provides for their exceptional evolution and into a growing community of individuals supporting one another on this path. So this is a really powerful episode. I really hope it helps you and maybe introduces you to another modality to help you grow, learn, and heal. Some of the things we talk about with Sarah's really interesting journey. When she completely pivoted her career, she was actually an aspiring actress living in Los Angeles and she was a dog walker and all of a sudden she had a breaking point and pivoted, made a sharp right turn and went into this work with uh, the Effigy Breath community. We talked about entrepreneurship and the change of careers, about getting out of your own way, how about there's a, how, how there's a big difference between magnetism and assertion, that masculine and feminine essence, those qualities, which is always one of my favorite things to talk about. Big, big difference between asserting your will and magnetizing what you want to you. We talk about why breath work is now so popular, how effigy is unique, how your breath is actually your life and how it tells people a lot about you and who you are, basically how you breathe is basically broadcasting a lot about you. How effigy breath work and breath work in general can be like plant medicine. The facilitator's role and the importance of having a good facilitator. We talk about the importance of trusting and how to trust your body's instincts and relationships. And I share my personal experience. It's not easy for me to do that kind of thing because obviously it's super personal. Um, but I do it just really with the hope and a prayer that it connects with you and really helps you to, uh, go there yourself. And Hey, one more thing, stay tuned to the end because Sarah shares with us a special coupon code where you can try the online program, the online course with Sarah for yourself, which she does every month or even an in-person class and save 50%. This is a no brainer. You guys save 50% and see what happens. Just enter the coupon code fit Amy TV 50. That's all caps fit Amy TV, which is my Instagram handle, by the way, 50 at checkout and you will save 50%. So thank you, Sarah, for extending that to my audience because we're trying to give you incentive to try it, my friend, because I'm all about having you take action, right? Listen, be entertained. That's great. Maybe even laugh a little, but come on, let's make some changes. Let's make some progress. Let's evolve together. And by the way, thank you for sharing this episode and leaving a review. Thank you for leaving a review and sharing it with your friends. Be sure to tag me too so I can come say hi to you. I love you guys. We're in this together. Let's now join Sarah Sharmoli. And welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. Today, my guest is Sarah Sharmoli. Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Where are you located today, Sarah? I'm in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. We say Louisville. Louisville. Louisville, Kentucky. 
Yeah. Excellent. Now you're not from there, right? No, I am from here. You are. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. So you lived in LA for a while. So you're now back to your roots. Yeah. I lived here for a long time. I went to Chicago for a minute, West coast for a minute. Now I'm back here. Okay. Now I'm really excited to get into this world of breath work for you because I will admit to you and the listening audience, the viewing audience, this is new to me. I've been in holistic health and wellness for 30 years, over 30 years, but breath work is something that's kind of been a relatively new phenomenon in my life. I don't know, maybe mainstream a little bit too. It's become pretty vogue. We're going to go in deep and in particular to your method, which is called the effigy breath work. Mm -hmm. But before we get into that, Sarah, I'd like to get a little personal with you, woman to woman, because I think you have a very interesting story that yeah. a lot of us can relate to. And you had a major pivot in your life where you really respected your feelings, your needs, went with your intuition and made a big break. And it, 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 it ended up being, it ended up bringing you to your, to your Dharma, to your destiny. So yeah. tell us about what happened when you were in LA and you were a dog walker in that story. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, the way that you've read my words and how you're framing it makes it sound like it was very conscious on my part, okay. but I don't think it actually was. I think, um, I mean, what happened was essentially it's like, I trained to be an actor. I went to school and studied and hustled that world, like auditioning, dropping my headshot. I was in Chicago. I did a lot of storefront theater, moved to LA to try and like, I don't know, be a star, you know, live that Hollywood dream. And I was just majorly in that world, just trying to be an extra and get onto a lot, get in front of a producer, like do that whole thing. And I had some um, exquisite experiences. And in that time too, I started a dog walking business with a friend of mine. And it became one of those moments that was like, holy shit, am I allowed to say that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was we like, keep it real here, my friend. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Let um, it rip. <laughs> yeah. It was like, I was just so dedicated to being an actor and being an artist, but then I started this business and it went from like, you know, me and my buddy walking a couple dogs here and there to 10 employees, hundreds of clients, busy wow. schedules every day. I mean, my clients ranged from like the most famous of the most famous to like the most unfamous people all over Hollywood and beyond. And that was a real um, spark to me about entrepreneurship. But, and also the moment that I think you're talking about is like, I just one day quit. I just quit. I couldn't do it anymore. I didn't want to be um, committed to this world of being of service to other people and their lives and their dogs. And my business partner was a challenging human being for me to be with lots of lessons learned, bless him. Um, but then I, the, the night that I, uh, quit, I just was like, I'm done. I'm out. Like, I can't go on. I got a phone call from a friend of mine and she was like, I'm seeing this guy up in Mendo. We're going to go trim weed for a few weeks, maybe a month or so. Do you want to go? And I was like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> so, um, we went a couple weeks later and I intended on spending a couple weeks there and I ended up staying about three months and, I think this is, it really was such a subconscious, unconscious choice on my part. Like I just had to get the fuck out of LA. I just had to do it. And I, I always assumed I'd just go back there and like pick up my life and go back to being an actor and like figure it out, wait tables or do something. But the guy that I ended up staying with up in Mendocino was this guy that became a really good dear heart friend of mine. And he was doing a breathwork training with Elijah Nissenboim in Miami at the time. And Elijah is now my business partner. And I met him through my friend that I was staying with in Mendocino and Elijah and I just immediately were, um, it was an easy friendship for us to come together. And he was like, you know, things about business. I need help with my business. And I was like, I'm busy, man, out in the woods trim and wade and he was like <laughs> he, he was like come on he's like just help me and we kind of came up with this arrangement where i stayed in his house for a month and he like fed me and we worked on some projects together and also at that same time my father was really ill here in kentucky and so it just became this 
kind of um, combustible moment of me deciding like, I'm just going to put myself in storage in LA and figure out if I'm ever going to get back there or not. I'm going to go help my mom take care of my dad. And Elijah was really traveling a lot on the East coast at that time. So I just started basing myself out of Kentucky. And then over the course of about five years, I ended up in every training, every workshop, every retreat, everything with Elijah, just helping him with all of his administrative stuff. And that really, that's that pivot that you're talking about, but it wasn't like, I was like, and this is what my life is about now. It wasn't oh. like that. It was like, I was a product of my own circumstance. And also I was following my nose. I, I mean, for the first several years of working with Elijah, he was always pushing me to like, get over there, get involved, like feel people, like get into their space, like help to facilitate their experience inside the breath. And I was so scared of myself. There's like, I was like, oh gosh, people, their energy. And now I'm just the opposite. I'm like a scrappy little animal that just wants to sniff my little nose around everybody and get into the stew with everybody's stuff. It's just my most... It's where I feel the most alive and the most powerful in a way. And I also think like, just to say, all well, that training as an actor was, was what really spoke to my heart. Training, how I viewed it was just like, I loved people and I loved getting into characters and understanding the inside world of a character. And that is really translated over to my work as just my own empathic, intuitive being that knows how to hold space. And now I'm standing on my own stage all the time. I'm on stage all the time and I'm saying my own words, not someone else's. And instead of trying to entertain them, I'm help, I'm attempting to help. And that just soothes my heart in such a different way than me just like, I don't know, trying to get on some stupid TV show. Thank God I never got a job. I'm grateful. Isn't that amazing? You know how many people uh, pretty much had the same dreams as you, you know, not even if they didn't actually move to L.A. or whatever, but, you know, yeah. have that even me, you know, that drive to quote unquote perform or entertain yeah. or whatever it is with my career, too. And uh, I even took acting classes at one point and, you know, dabbled in it a little bit, loved the theater, all that mm -hmm. stuff. And um you know, it, it's just amazing, you know, like, thank God for unanswered prayers, you know, that yeah. saying that, you know, usually it's because the doors just aren't opening, there might be something better that's beyond your wildest dreams. But I don't, I don't want to skip over this part, though, Sarah, because I think this is a real common thing right now for people really looking for their their dharma their life's purpose their soul's calling they want basically what you have now that fulfillment mm -hmm. maybe they are you know barking up the wrong tree and it's interesting to hear that you're saying you didn't have a an aha moment it wasn't like when you know your friend david offered to for you to stay at his house and your girlfriend called and said come with me you were like yeah. yes i'm in you know right. you didn't have that moment where you knew but you went anyway so how do we how do we like know what breadcrumbs to say yes to if they're not the big obvious yes? Right. I think there's two parts to it. I think one is natural inclination and the other is getting out of your own way. Okay. And I think the, my, I would say like a gift that I am so grateful for that I feel like I've had is like, I'm, I'm an Aries, if that means anything to anyone, like I'm impulsive. And I, it, it was like even moving to LA in the first place. I was, I was living in Chicago. I thought that's where I was just going to live. And I got this feeling like I gotta get the fuck out of here. I gotta get out of here. And then literally two weeks later, I'd packed up all my stuff, came to Kentucky, bought a car, drove across the country, got two jobs, stayed with a friend and got an apartment within like three weeks. I just had a life in LA. And I think that is my nature. And I get that not everybody's like that. Oh and I get God. that it's really um, challenging for some people to just jump off the cliff when in, you know, in your 20s, it's just so much easier to jump off the cliff. And that is what I was doing all the time to my own detriment. I made a lot of bad decisions then, but I also was so much so willing to risk. So I think that's part of it. It's like, what's your nature and what are you willing to risk? And then on the other side of it, the getting out of your own way, I think that this is what actually breathwork does and has done for me is like 
to clear the decks, but not in like this heady linear way. So I find that a lot of people can be very sensitive, empathic, and a very, I mean, most human beings, like the beauty of humanity, the beauty of people, I always find it's like, you look into someone's eyes, like, oh my gosh, like the universe is inside there and you can feel it. And then they open their mouth and they start talking and the way they organize is like, what's going on? Like, how did you get there from like, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's like, if you can get into the somatics of your energetic full experience and you start to understand how you feel things, how you feel, not what you feel, but how you feel them. Mm -hmm. And then to start letting that be your guidepost, then you can't go wrong. You know, one thing I do want to say, Amy, that I think is a real, Elijah and I have been in this conversation for the last, I feel like it's been a year. Maybe he hasn't been in the conversation, but I've been in it around like this idea that you can get realized in, in a human lifetime, right? But you, some people get realized by how they succeed and other people get realized by how they fail. And I honestly feel like my path has been, I've been, I got to get realized by how I, by my failures, not by how I've succeeded. Like even in Hollywood, I think back, there was this one moment I was up for this uh, diversity showcase at CBS and you got to go in and be part of this panel and like all the producers, all the studio people, agents, everybody came and watched these people. And I got thousands of people auditioned, thousands. And I got down to the last 25 people in the room in the audition. And I looked around, I was the only white girl. And I was like, amazing, I'm in, I knew it. I had auditioned well that day and I didn't get it. And I was, oh my God, like I just devastated in that moment. But I look back on that now, it's like, oh my God, thank God. Like had I not failed, failed is a relative word too, but had I not, had I, had I gotten that, my life could have pivoted in a completely different way. And my life was meant to be this. And I just think like, there's a lot to be said for how we succeed and how we fail and about trusting that there's opportunity everywhere in the successes and in the failures. I think one of the most interesting things about your story too, now that I hear more of the detail is that it took, it still took a while. Like you were saying how uh, Elijah had to keep coaxing you and encouraging you and kind of not pushing you, but you know, like, come on, yeah. get more involved. Like it, it, even though, sure, it wasn't that initial light bulb moment, but it wasn't even like, pretty soon after it would, oh. it took a while, which is interesting too. Cause I even know like with me, like teaching classes and other things that I've done, I love like doing my workshops, women's circles and you know, yeah. anything that I, I loved it from the beginning, like, or even yeah. talk shows and, you know, being on the radio or whatever. Yeah. I loved it from the beginning. I was like, I love this. I feel like I'm on drugs. Like this is so yeah. fun, you know? Yeah. And, um, but it's interesting how you still didn't it took still took a while, which is and again, we're just taking this apart for people because I, I, I think a lot of people struggle with this. They all want what you now have that feeling of fulfillment, peace, confidence, assuredness. You are doing the right thing. You are in the right place. You're feeling fulfilled. So yeah. many of us are looking for that. I think another piece of it that just comes to me while you're talking is about magnetism. Mm. And I think there's a lot of, I mean, especially for women, I don't know uh, totally what your, who your audience is, but if there's women listening, I feel like this is so specific for women. It's like, at least women that I know, it's like we, in this culture that we're in, this capitalistic American society, it's like, we have to be penetrating and forceful and direct. And actually it's like, no, no, we don't have to do that at all. It's like, we have to be mother earth and allow allow for the your magnetism to come for the energy to come to you and for the magnetism to light up and i feel like that's one of the huge things that i've learned and i feel like that is something that was almost natural to me initially i think that's how i like i've said many times like i was just a fool stumbling through open doorways yeah. and i i really think that but it was just like oh i but in my own way, I was magnetizing the thing that I really wanted somewhere in my unconscious, subconscious world. And I think what you're talking about is like people want like, oh, I want to I've got more to give. I've got more to be. I've got. But it's like if if we can just sit back a second and see what you really feel and start to answer to the calling, to the magnetism, to the what's actually in front of you, like the universe is kind mm -hmm. and it will show you the right path if you're listening. As soon as everybody goes pushing the river, I think there's a time to push the river. Push the river. Yeah. But 
I think if you're uh, if you're really listening, everybody's got a path. And I think this is, and I'm curious to know what you think about this actually. It's like, I could see myself as a young person, like, well, I could do this, I could do that, I could do this, mm-hmm. I could do that. And then as I get older, it's like, no, I can do one thing. Narrow, <laughs> more narrow. Yeah. yeah, that was a big problem for me. Even to this day, sometimes I struggle because like, you know, being a holistic practitioner, there's so many, so much involved, I mean, in our lives, right? So many components and factors and relevant things that affect how we look, feel, think, all that stuff. Right. And sometimes I would get anxiety because I'm like, but I don't really specialize in one thing, you know, because it, it's all, it all matters, you know, it all matters. Right. But I, I think what you're saying though about the magnetism is key and a big part of awakening Aphrodite because in our culture, to your point, yes, we're all about the push, ambition, you know, we make it happen, nose to the grindstone, you know, if if it's meant to be, it's up to me, you know, and all these, you yeah. know, affirmations that we say, and it's like, well, wait a second, when are you pushing, I love the, your expression, against the river, when are you swimming up the river, and when, so what it's about ultimately is developing wisdom and discretion to know when it's time to go and when it's time to flow, you know, and magnetism also, I will add, involves your self-care because you need to be fully resourced and fully centered in yourself in order to be magnetic. You're not going to be magnetic if you're scattered and distracted and overwhelmed and stressed out and, you know, all that stuff. So for all of us who feel guilty about our self-care time, there you go. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, a huge thing, which I don't think I've ever said on any podcasts or publicly anywhere is um, about four years ago, I stopped drinking and I wasn't, even when I stopped drinking, I was not like, woo, I was not a partier. I was not a person that had a problem with alcohol ever. Like I was, I was a social, social drinker, drinker. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I decided that I was going to read this book about sleep. And it, to your point about self-care, all of a sudden I realized like, oh my God, I've always been a person that didn't think I needed sleep. And then I was like, oh wait, no, I have to sleep. So I got on this thing about sleeping which led to, I don't need to be drinking <laughs> because wow. drinking keeps me up at night. Disrupt which, your sleep. Yep. Yes. Which led to this whole revealing thing to me around like, oh, I've become this automated person around alcohol. Like I grew up in Kentucky, you know, like that's a huge part of the social culture here. Mm -hmm. And I think what that did for me as far as self-care does, is like, oh my gosh, like sobriety, like to keep your brain clear is so, is such a curious fascinating, opening, revealing, enlightening experience that now for some years later, there's no part of me that wants to go altering my state because I'm still discovering so much about what is in the sober, non-brain fogged world. And I think that's really helped to develop my self-care. It's to to really look at my own body, my own, my own set of resources that are just right here. It's like, how can I be, how can I be spiritual Sarah and also be not taking care of myself, Sarah? It just doesn't, it just doesn't match up. And I'm like, again, like I'm an Aries. I got energy for days. Like this is just what I am without substances. It's like, Oh my God, like, (laughs) <laughs> I don't need any of that. <laughs> That's awesome. Plus you, you can change your state from within with your own resources, what you're saying. You don't need the external. Um, and, and let's get into that. So Sarah, yeah. what's going on with breath work? Why, why all of a sudden this, the, the huge insurgence, I know it's been around forever, obviously with, you know, ancient yogis yeah. and all that stuff, but in America probably got hip around the seventies, probably around the time yeah. yoga started getting a little bit in. But now it really is becoming more mainstream as, you know, with the psychedelic movement and all these different modalities. What do you think is going on with why? Why is it now popular? What is it about breath work? And then what is it about effigy that's unique in that in that space? Yeah, thank you. Great question. I think, well, first of all, I started doing this about a decade ago. It was uh, 2012 and anytime someone would ask, so what do you do? I'd be like, oh, I teach breath work. And people would be like, breast uh-huh. work? What's yeah, right. that? Like, the best oh. work? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. So I'd have to go into this thing and talk about what the breath and breath work was. And now when I say it, people are like, oh, I've heard of that. I want to try that. 
Uh -huh. So I know to your point, like it's something's happening. And I think what has happened is like, there's been people inside the movement of like Wim Hof, like Wim Hof has been great for business because he's this wild character out there in the world. Who's using the cold plunges and the breath to optimize his physical state. And people love that shit. People love hacking, biohacking. They love hacking the body. And, and it's superhuman. Like it's, totally. wow. Like how is that even really happening? This is not a sci-fi movie. <laughs> right. And also to your point about psychedelics making their way into modern culture, but psychedelics are challenging in a country filled with addicts. <laughs> yeah. And I think people are really looking for ways to, forgive me for not having the uh, better words, but like to get high. Like it's a Change way- their state to change your state, but also to, from my point of view, to earn it, to earn the transcendence, to earn the ecstasy is so mm -hmm. different than like taking a psychedelic and also to get the same effect. So I think there's several things So just like people like Wim Hof, people like the psychedelic movement entering the zeitgeist in a new way. And I also think just you know, people in the wellness world, I'm sure you've seen a million times over, like trends, their trends come in waves, right? It's like, and I feel like breathwork's having its moment. Yes, it is. People that follow these kinds of holistic health trends, they're right there. And I think to answer your question about what I'm doing that's different is that I'm actually not trying to use breathwork as a hack. What I'm doing is about real transformation. So there's the breathwork and the breath technique that Effigy is about. And then there's this philosophy that goes with it, which is about resistance. It's about releasing trauma and about total transformation for, I mean, I don't know how to say it any differently, but like for a better life, it's like, we're looking for a better life. That's not filled with every with to, to try and take yourself from being a giant pushable button that gets pushed all the time Triggered. to mm -hmm. a grounded person who uses those triggers for uh enlightenment for evolution for self-knowledge growth evolution self-knowledge exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah well wow okay so i've heard you say that your breath mirrors your life and that you know a lot about a person after you've watched them breathe. Can you explain yeah. that? Yeah, I think that's a, a, it's a great question and it's a super nuanced answer because uh -huh. I think everything that we are is inside of a breath, right? It's like, <sighs> like you can hear me in a certain way. I mean, I'm listening in energy, um, which I just have trained myself to do over time, but anybody who's had trauma or lives in some negative thought pattern or is that giant button that's always getting triggered or whatever. Like it's all really inside your breath, how you breathe. Like I was listening to this podcast the other day with this woman who's quite famous. And this guy was talking to her about how to do little breath practices. And she was, he was like, okay, take a deep breath. And she goes, <sighs> yeah. And I was like, wow, wow, oh, from wow, the wow, neck. wow, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. He goes, okay, now let it out. And she goes, it's like, oh my God. And then I listened to myself. It's like, <sighs> it's like, oh, there's such a difference. And I think what I mean by that is like every, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm -hmm. Your breath is your life. How you breathe is how you live. Like they're all kind of similar concepts. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's in its own way, Amy, like really hard to explain because everybody is so unique and how they hold stuff in their body is really unique how they hold trauma, how they hold their quote unquote energetic garbage stuff, mm -hmm. how they hold it, like how you are going to hold it in your body, even where you've had physical traumas or physical pain where you're holding it in your body. It's just not going to be the same as me. Mm -hmm. It's just not because you've had your own life, your own experiences. And that is so evident to me when you start to breathe. Like I, what I see a lot, right. Is people start the breath, they start the practice. And I see this <sighs> trying, they're trying. It's a lot of thinking. It's a lot of head energy. Mm -hmm. it's like, but you're breathing into this beautiful giant apparatus, like your lungs and your heart, like this whole torso can get activated. And people are like, oh, trying, right? yeah, really in their heads. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think it's, mm -hmm. again, just, it's hard to explain. I mean, I'm actually curious, like from your own experience, from your own breath, like 
in inside your world like what was it could you feel where your quote unquote stuff was like could you feel in your body like where things were being held or where there was tension yeah so okay we definitely got to get into my experience so just for the audience um i had taken one of sarah's online classes and we're going to talk about that at the end of the show and i know you have a great offer for the audience too to try it out at a significant discount because you do these courses now online which is beautiful and i really really recommend everybody give it a try and I've done other breath works, people's uh, methods, I guess you should say. Um, And they're certainly not all the same. They're probably, and I was actually going to ask you that, how much of it depends on the instructor, because I'll just add, I just loved you as an instructor. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would imagine it's very important, Sarah, because you're really setting the the set and setting and the the feeling of safety is is a big thing. common denominator in a lot of my shows, a lot of the, and just yeah. life, right. And certainly releasing and healing trauma. Yeah. And actually it's the lack of safety is the pretty much the cause of experiencing trauma. Yeah. Um, but the facilitator you is just bingo. I mean, I felt very held and safe, which enabled me to go there. Um, but I will just say before we get into my experience, um, I, I haven't had a lot of luck with breath work and I'm wondering if it's because I'm, I tend to be in my head too much, which again, reason for my show, awakening Aphrodite and getting out of my head. Um, and when I say a lot of luck, I mean, that's, that's revealing right there, right? Like trying to do it right. You know, I must be doing it wrong. So I, I had written in my notes uh, of the experience with you that I was really fresh because it's basically guys for an hour, is the is the is the um, the format, and maybe you should talk us through that because I, I'll just say for the first good twenty minutes, I was in my head getting pissed at myself because I wasn't doing it right. So, do you want to just explain to people what, yeah, how it works, so they know what we're talking about when I explain what happened to me? Yeah, sure. So this is an uh, what we call a conscious hyperventilation. Yeah, hyperventilation just to say gets a bad rap because yeah. it's connected to trauma, but hyperventilation, hyper more than enough ventilation, more than enough ventilation. Okay. That's all we're doing. We're just over oxygenating the body. So what we do is we breathe. It's a three-parted practice. So it's focused yeah. on the inhale through the mouth into the chest. Yeah. So of course the diaphragm is going to get involved. So it's going to feel like the belly's activated, but we're really talking about taking in a full breath through the mouth, wide open mouth. Yeah focus on the inhale into the heart space. So it's, and you really want to fill up super full so much so that there's nothing left to do. Once the breath goes in super full, all it does is come out. You just let it out. And that's the third part, which is interesting. You just let it out. You don't force it out or anything because a lot of breath practices really emphasize the exhale. Cause that's the parasympathetic relaxation effect. But right. what's interesting about yours is no, you just let the exhale happen. That's right. So we could do 10 breaths together. If you okay. Want. So but I wish I could breathe like you, like you're a mate. You sound like the Darth Vader thing. Like I, <laughs> I can't get that, but I can try. Well, and just to say one thing before yeah. we do it, Amy, it's like, I have a lot of people that come to my class. I got a guy coming to my class consistently every week. He comes, he comes, he comes. I teach in person here in Louisville nice. and he comes, he's like, God, I want to get good at breath work. Yep. And I'm like, well, there's not really anything to get good at. Like you're just being you and any information that comes through is really good information. So that part of you, that's like for those first 20 minutes, it's like, Oh, I'm so frustrated. It's like, well, Uh the breath isn't frustrating. It's like, you are, (laughs) you are frustrating. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was the lesson for me, which we will get at for sure. Which is is my pattern. Right. What a beautiful revelation. It's Mm -hmm. It's like, you're good at breath work. You're good at it because you got the information. That's all we're trying to do is extract the clarity, extract the energy, extract the power, extract the purpose, extraction. We're just extracting it. And I right. think too, it's like at the end of at the end of it, the day or the, the result is what did you learn about yourself? Right. And what I learned about myself was just that, that I tend to be type A, want to quote unquote, want to do everything right want to get it right, want to do it really well, Mm -hmm. want to get this great benefit from it. And it's like, but so what I learned about myself was that I'm doing that. First of all, 
But even if that was the only quote unquote good thing that came out of it, it's like, wow, what is it about me that puts this expectation of an end result rather than focusing on the journey itself of the experience? Yeah. I mean, look, we're all guilty of that, right? It's like, I, I mean, I love the breath. I've done hundreds of them. I breathe almost every day, not for an hour, but I'll yeah, get up yeah. and do some breath. And like, there's just this part of me. that's like, I love it so much. It feels so good. But there have been, even in the recent past where I'll lay down to do an hour and like, I just dip out and I'm like, where have I been? Where well, you, have you I been? You stop and you yeah. fall asleep or whatever. I mean, that's actually pretty rare, but when it yeah. does happen, I'm like, huh. What's going on there? Maybe you're just tired. Like, you know, your body's tired. Yeah. Or there's, some, mm. or maybe there's something that I just don't want to look at right now. Uh, and that's mm. really good information for me. And there it's you like go. To, so I think it's just such an unfolding yes. journey. And it's like, and you know, for all intent and purposes, yeah, like I'm good at breath. So what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who fucking cares? And, Who cares? Yeah, I'm good at it, yeah right? there you go. <laughs> and I, you know, I'll add what we're talking about is making me think like, and, and therefore, this is how it's a lot like doing plant medicine, because once you start, you don't know what's going to happen. You got to let go of all your expectations, whatever, anything that you're thinking, I want to address this trauma that happened to me or whatever. Oh, no. It's like you've you've turned over that steering wheel and you're in. And right. that's so in that regard, it reminded me a lot of, of a medicine journey. Yeah, because it was like, all right, I'm in for the ride and whatever my soul wants me to experience is what's going to happen. And that's exactly what happened. Well, and that's such a beautiful thing, right? So you, you struggle for the first 10, 20 minutes of it. Mm -hmm. and then you get to this place. It's like, I am not in charge here. Yep. I've got to just go and surrender. And that's what oh. I did. Yep. Right. I was like, like, all right. Incredible. It takes you 20 minutes to do that. Cool. You're fine, Amy. Like <laughs> it might've been a little bit longer, Sarah. I don't know. <laughs> the class was an hour, but it seemed like forever. I was like, I suck. What? And I'm like, you know, every now and then I'd open my eyes and look and see whatever, is everybody else still breathing? Like, am I the only one that, yeah. Yeah. But look like to even arrive there before the end of the hour, like what a revelation. It's like, wow. Like, you know, enough, like there's enough of your mind at play to say like, let go. Yes. Let go. Let yeah, go. Yeah. You have to work hard at it. It's not yes. that different than me, you know, stumbling, fumbling around, being like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life to all of a sudden yeah. not be this person. It's not that different, right? It's just yes. like, okay, I just know enough to at some point let go. And, and again, it was that self-knowledge because it was indicative of how I've lived most of my life, like really forcing it and pushing it and using my will and my my willpower and and having to once again learn that lesson to let go amy and stop trying just allow and just let it go and uh because it, it was definitely a struggle for me and i and but i did learn a lot about myself and yeah. um you know. i do want to just comment on one other thing that you said was about hmm. the facilitator's role yes um i think this is where i think effigy parts from other practices okay. meaning that like my job as a facilitator is to be involved. And I don't mean that in like an overmerged, down in the stew, like as I said earlier, like I love that bit, but that's not really what my job is. My job is to be involved in your process enough to know how to hold the space, how to be an open channel so that if something does need to be said, I can say it. Mm -hmm. And like in person too, like I do touch. So I'll use touch in person just to kind of influence the situation. I don't think we need that actually. The the world of the internet online classes has taught me otherwise, but I think facilitation really does matter. It's a skill that I have had to hone over the last decade of like, I am meant to be there to hold the space, like you said, so that you can actually let go. And one of the huge mantras that I say inside my classes all the time is don't do it alone. Do not try to heal yourself by yourself. It mm. doesn't work. Everybody needs help. We need help. I call it the octopus on the face. It's like, okay, it's so close. You can't see it. So we need help, like prying that octopus off your face. Like just allow some help here. And I really feel like that's what I'm meant to do. I'm just meant to say like, hey, Amy, go back to the breath. Just feel your heart. 
when you might be in your head, right? It's like to just activate those little things to help guide the energy and hold the space. Like it's a hard thing to talk about or know what it is until you have the experience of being in the room with someone that's doing that really well. So I think the facilitation does actually matter. And I feel like this is one thing Elijah and I, when we teach together, most of our online classes, he and I teach together. And it's like, we're both doing the same thing in our different polarity things. Like mm. I'm doing it from the feminine way. He's doing it from the masculine way. Mm -hmm. He's in the penetrating, in the directness, in the like, let's push ourselves into the breath and move the, move the energy along. And I'm in the like holding space, being the like holistic, uh, energy influencer. And I think that's, it really does set and setting does profoundly matter. Profoundly like everything in life. Like we, we all, we each have to have really have the, the discretion to who we entrust our hearts and our, and our innermost beings with, you know, right. and we, we have to make that decision of and and finding those support systems teachers whoever they may be and and maybe to my point earlier of how i've tried other breath works and they didn't really click for me and you know other people in the room seem to be having these kind of you know amazing experiences and i'm just like what's wrong with me i i don't know i'm not getting it like i just don't i don't know and it could be a lot of things but it could be i just wasn't clicking actually one setting was not right for me i just didn't i f didn't feel safe at all mm -hmm. so little things like that so just for yeah. the audience is just why i'm kind of staying on this point is you know just it's like anything in life you don't find a doctor you like keep looking you don't <laughs> you don't find a friend you like keep looking they're out there like you just got to find the one that clicks for you and as far as a breathwork facilitator um i just i i you were the one for me <laughs> that's yeah pretty cool. Well, thank you for saying that. And at the same time, like, I want to be clear to you and to your audience, like I am in an offering. And this is just a funny thing that I can't believe I'm going to say, but I'll say it anyway. Elijah and I laugh to ourselves all the time. It's like, we're just selling water by the riverside. We're selling, <laughs> selling breath, right? Yeah. We all but breathing. We're all breathing. We're literally all doing it. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. But I want to say too, it's like, yes, I, I value what I do and how I can hold space and how I can be influential in a positive energetic way inside those sessions. And like, I'm not really doing anything like you're doing it. And that's the power that I am trying to give to everyone in every single session. It's like, you have the power, you have agency over your own life. You have agency over your own breath. And if you can come and breathe your full tail off, you can prove to yourself that you can tolerate your experiences, that you can tolerate your emotions, that you can cleanse yourself by doing something so little as changing the cadence of your breath. All I'm doing is showing you what to do. And then you go and do it. I think that's, yeah, but I think that's so all true, but to your point earlier too, that, you know, when you said, don't do it alone is when you're a beginner and when you're, when you're stepping into uncharted waters that might be feeling like you're going to go in the deep end over your head right. and you're a beginner swimmer, it's good to have a guide. What, what you are doing is it's like the little kid riding the bike and every now and then they look back over the shoulder to make sure mommy's still there looking at them. You know, yeah. it's like you giving that encouragement, like you're okay. You're okay. Keep going. You're okay. You know, cause when you're out of your comfort zone, it's helpful to have a knowledgeable, experienced, uh, trustworthy guide. That's right. To, to, to walk with you just to reassure you. Cause so yes, to your point, we're the ones doing it ultimately, but, yeah. but you're the one, the wise elder, so to speak, kind of encouraging us, like reassuring you're, you're fine. You're not dying. Don't worry. Yeah. You're well, and then that's true. I mean, mm -hmm. because you have these, the breath can bring up so much. It can be yeah. so intense yeah. in yeah. the body, in the emotions. And it's like, I, I'm one mm -hmm. of those people that like, I go towards the fire. I don't run away. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And to be able to go and be, and just say exactly what you said, it's like, you're okay. You got to, yeah. you got to go through these rough waters mm -hmm. to get to the other side. And I'm with you. Yes. That can do wonders for someone mm -hmm. who is having an intense experience and at the other side of it to realize like, oh, I did it myself. Like how powerful. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Real quick. Why do you think you're selling you're selling water by the river. I love that. Why do you think since breathing is the first thing that happens when we're born, the last mm -hmm. thing that happens when we die, 
why do we have to learn this, Sarah? Why don't we know these type of techniques of these amazing ways that we, without an external substance, can go to altered states to tap into our unconscious, to release trauma, to heal our minds, bodies, and spirits? Why don't we know how to do this instinctually on our own? Why, do, why does someone have to teach us to how to do this method? Well, I mean, great question. And I'm not sure I really have the answer. What I can tell you from my experience, it's all anecdotal, is that, you know, we have, we live in, from my, my opinion, like these are dark times. Like we live in very harsh circumstances emotionally and people emotionally and circumstantially. I mean, like everybody I know, every woman I know has had some sort of traumatic experience of the body. And if I just, if I just take the women, right, that's half the population. It's like, we have these experiences in life. Like we're what's inside the culture is not freedom of the heart is yeah. not freedom of expression. We live inside these very dense, uh, structures of this is how you are supposed to be. Don't be anything except what you're supposed to be inside of this world, inside of this culture, doing exactly what your role is set out for you, predetermined before you ever get the chance to decide. And I think yeah, I was listening to this other podcast that really just struck my heart. And they were talking about how, you know, even to your question, it's like, how, why do we have to learn how to do this? I actually think we're just learning how to unlearn. Huh. We're unlearning. Right. Yeah. All we're doing is unlearning the bullshit of our own experiences that have put things into place. I can say from my own experience, like my own traumatic experiences built up walls inside of my body that were actually really smart and necessary for the time, like being a young person that was reckless and in trouble all the time with myself, with my body. And those protections that got put into place energetically were actually quite smart. And then I, once I started working on myself and getting to know myself, it was like, oh, wow, those protections just don't matter anymore. I don't need them because I can trust myself. I can trust that I can take care of myself in moments. I can, I trust that I can know how to honor my body. And it took a lot. I mean, I'm still working on that in so many ways, right? Like mm -hmm. still working on like how to trust my body, how to trust mm. my instinct, how to trust relationships and to go really slow in doing that. And I feel like I'm unlearning how to keep those protections and boundaries inside of myself, energetic walls I've put up. I'm just unlearning it. And that's I just from my own that. experience. And like, as a person, like, and forgive me if this is like too woo woo or something, but I've part of what I've learned in touching people, like inside the breath, like I'll lay my hands on someone and just the magnitude of which you can feel inside someone else's experience. It's like, wow, mm. we hold so much, so much energy. So much energy and the capacity that the human body has to hold on is exponential. It's just, it's infinite what we can hold on to. And when it gets released, it feels like magic. Well, and this, this is the thing about emotions is it's just trapped energy in your body. So any kind of upsetting things or anything that's happened to you in your life, whether it's traumatic or just even a lesser degree, it's in there if you haven't processed it in a that's productive right. way. So it's trapped inside your body. And don't think that don't think for a second that that's not taking a lot of energy to keep down. That's right. So a lot of us are so tired or whatever. And, you know, it's like, cause your body is subconsciously using a lot of energy to totally. keep your shit together because <laughs> you, you have all that stuff in there that you haven't processed. And I know for me, that's one, one of the things that can, can happen. Like when I have any kind of cathartic releases like this, first of all, I get exhausted because then my body has to bounce back and recover. And then I'm like, wow, I literally feel lighter. And I, feel like I stand taller, like I'm physically yeah. different. Right. I think another thing, just like to give a finite mm. example, like if we take anxiety, yeah. right? Anxiety, if you break it down, it's energy, right? If you break down like anxiety and anxiety attack or like that feeling, that overwhelming anxiety mm -hmm. feeling, it's energy. And what I've said a million times over is it's anxiety is energy pointed in the wrong direction. Yeah. 
it's like all you got to do like that's your life force you're just trying to destroy yourself with it unconsciously rather than using it to your benefit and if there's anything i mean i can say from my own anecdotal experience like people that have anxiety have panic attacks they'll come and do one breath with me and never get another panic attack again because they understand wow. that that energy that they're invoking, right? You talked about those focusing on the exhale that accesses the parasympathetic nervous mm -hmm. system. That's kind of not what we're trying to do. We're trying to mm -hmm. activate the sympathetic nervous system so that we understand from our mind that we can tolerate it, have consciousness, have awareness, come into contact with those things that feel so intense and like we can't deal with it. But if you can have those experiences in a conscious and aware way, that energy starts to pivot and move into, oh, this is my power. It's not mm. what's trying to destroy me. It's and I didn't die. You're not going to die. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm and like, you, you realize like, wait, I didn't die. Okay. All right. Yeah. Like I'm still here. It yeah. can be very scary in those moments because you're huh? active those experiences, but when you're doing it from consciousness, they can really clear. Mm -hmm. And again, like I'm talking about something conceptually. And if you're interested, just come and you have anxiety, just come and try the breath yeah. and see what it does for you. Like get inside this experiment because your breath can cure. It can literally transform the anxiety into energy that's usable. Yeah. Because ultimately the, you would say officially the purpose of effigy breath is what? Uh, to clear trauma, to let go of negative patterning, to heal. Mm -hmm. And you've mentioned some people in one session, you have like significant healing. Is that typical, Sarah? What, what, what are most people in your experience? Are they regulars? Do they maybe do like a little once a month or maybe once a year refresher? Like what, yeah. what do most people do or how do they use it? It's honestly all over the map. Okay. You know, it's like, I find some people, they get uh, this like spiritual warriors, they get into it and they're like, oh my goodness. And then they're there every time. It's like, how much can I do? Can I do this tomorrow? Like, let's do it. Let's do it. And they wow. show up all the time. There's some people that are like, I'll do it once this year. Mm -hmm. And some people will breathe a lot, breathe a lot, breathe a lot. And then they'll come back kind of for a maintenance thing. And mm -hmm. in a way, like this is where I think of the effigy in and of itself, it, I think it's a therapy. Mm -hmm. I think you don't have to breathe. This is not a lifelong practice. I really don't believe that. I think this is a practice that you can do a lot of. I always encourage if someone comes and they have a wow experience, and they have all this stuff in the body. I encourage do a lot do as much as possible. At the beginning, you're trying to break down the density of your energy so that you can really flow, yeah. change your vibration. And once you're doing that, and then you can start to feel like, I feel it so viscerally inside of me. It's just like, oh, I just get tangled up inside myself. It's like, I just, I need to breathe. I need to breathe. Yeah. And then I'll just do a session or two. And then I'm like, oh, okay, right. That was, I was right. <laughs> That's so, super interesting. Yeah. Because what, what kind of happened to me other than the beginning being like, once again, totally in my head and I'm not doing this right. What's wrong with me? And then I will admit, uh, you mentioned the resistance thing. I definitely got into some of the resistance because then all of a sudden my head started getting distracted and because it's an hour and yeah. it's an hour of just breathing in through your mouth, into your chest and letting it go for an hour laying on the yeah. floor. And of course it was pretty late at night here on, a, I think it was a Friday night that we did yeah, it Friday night. and I was a little sleepy and, uh, and so my mind started wandering. And so I definitely hit up with the resistance of going uh, like, oh God, you know, I've got other stuff I really should be doing and nothing's really happening. I'm not doing it right. So, you know, all this resistance. And, but the good thing about my strong will, <laughs> see, sometimes it's good Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is it, as I wasn't going to quit. I was like, nope, I committed to an hour. I'm doing this. And right. that's where, you know, again, that the big you, the little you has to come in and right. to know like, when is it time to be harder on yourself? And when is it time to be softer on yourself? Right. And I'm glad that I did that. So what I did, Sarah, is I just backed off a little with the intensity of the in inward breathing. Mm -hmm. um, and I just kind of let myself kind of process the whole thing. And then ultimately when we got to the end, uh, I, I started, it was right before the end, all of a sudden I had this weird memory of when I was probably a teenager, popped into my head. My family had a lake house in New Hampshire and we would go there every weekend. And my dad ran a business. He was kind of a workaholic. We didn't see him too much, but it was really special when we go to the lake house because we had this boat and we loved to water ski. And I used to barefoot water ski and we would go fill up the boat 
at this place getting gas. And it was so special because I didn't get to see my dad a lot when I was growing up because he was working all the time. And he would come with us to go get the gas because, you know, he was the adult. But anyway, the guy there at the gas place, uh, there was one time I went up to pay for it. And I was a young girl. My dad wasn't there. And I remember, and I didn't remember, but this came to me at the, at the breast thing. He said something, this guy working there said something kind of derogatory about my dad. It wasn't direct, but it was definitely a little bit of a, a like a negative slight against my dad. And I remember I felt a physical pain in my body during the breast thing. Mm -hmm. And then I went back and I was processing it. And it was just this, it was just so weird, Sarah. I'm in the breath work with you on a Friday night, you know, four weeks ago. And it was like this memory. And it was like, wow, wait, did that really happen? Like, what was this memory in my body? And then I started feeling all these things. And then toward the very end of the breath work, when you, because you use beautiful music, which is lovely. And, I, and it brought us down. And then there was some quiet time where we were just processing and integrating. And Sarah, I started sobbing. Mm sobbing like sobbing like the ugly cry on the floor and i started talking to my soul because i talk to my soul every day and all the time um and just talking about uh <laughs> i'm gonna try not to get too emotional but i started really crying about my dog charlotte because she's 14 and she's she probably doesn't have a lot of time left whoops uh I was afraid I was going to get a little emotional, but uh, I remember it just struck me out of nowhere. I wasn't prepared for that to happen that day of the breath work. Mm -hmm. And I started getting really mad at God, great spirit, whatever, like, you know, why do you want me to be alone? I know she's going to go soon and then I'll be alone. And uh, wow. Um, it was really like I had a left field, Sarah. Like, what is this all about? You know, but apparently that was in my body that I was feeling that because I know the day is coming very soon. And I'll share with our audience, which you know, Sarah, it's very funny that we're recording the show today because just this morning I had to take her to the emergency room. She had an episode and you and I almost didn't do this recording today because I thought I might have to cancel. Mm -hmm. So I really don't know how much time I have left with her. But the amazing thing is, is I did the breath work with you on a Friday night and I rushed her to the emergency room the following Monday. And I, so my soul knew and her soul knew on another level that something was going down because I got a preview of it the Friday night of breathwork with you. That Monday, emergency room with her, I almost lost her. She pulled through. She, I got another four weeks with her, brings us to today, four weeks later. Mm. And I have the recording with you and I took her to the emergency room just this morning again, the second time. So it just makes us think folks like, wow, our souls, the something's going on here of like, that we're all connected on some level of deeper knowing. And um, some part of me had already known this was going on behind the scenes before the conscious Amy did. Because again, this happened on Friday. Then I, my right. dog was relatively fine. Of course, I knew she was 14, but you know, there weren't any episodes. 48 hours later, I'm in the emergency room with her and I almost lost her. Mm -hmm. And then the birth work with you, I was crying to great spirit. Why are you going to take her from me? Like, why was I doing that? So, and then I look back now in the preparation with you today and going, oh, wait a minute, that happened right. And I'm putting the pieces together now in retrospect, like, holy crap it's like if you don't believe in god or something greater than you i guess something like this hasn't happened to you yet but i guess it will <laughs> yeah i mean well thank you for sharing i think it's a beautiful well what you're sharing is so specific to you right yeah how it's how the dots are connecting i think you're just proving my point which is like what matters to you what your soul is about yeah how your experiences matter, the part of you that says surrender, 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 the part of you that says like, I'm not gonna quit. It's, it's creating this space so that you can access access the deep part of yourself. And in a way, like what I started thinking of is when you were talking is when I first started working with Elijah 10 years ago, my dad was really ill and I feel like I would not have been able to survive his death and that whole experience 
had I not had this work, had I not had the experience inside myself to know that like, I'm so capable of holding so much and of being open and surrendered at the same time. And I think that's really what you're talking about. It's like, all you're doing is training yourself into the surrender. It's like, what a beautiful thing that you wow. get to have. It's like, you're in your own risking of like having animals. I have a dog too, like she's my angel. And it's like how the, these beings come in and they affect your life, but it's a risk, right? Because they're gonna go. And you know, it's coming one day, the day you buy them or you bring them home, you know, that day is going to come one day, right? break and, your heart. Right. And I think it's like, it's so, it's so extraordinary to get to have those weeping moments. It's like, to me, it's like, oh, that is the beauty, the extreme of your life. It's like extreme joy and extreme pain are yep. not that far apart. They hold hands. They're, They're dead fellows. Right there. Right. They're just right there. And I think like how beautiful to like have the capacity inside of yourself to get into the depth of what that means, what the experience is, what the connection to you means while you still have time together. Yeah. Wow. Well, you know, you just made me think of something, Sarah. I'll add to that that and maybe this is good. It's testament to my growth in that when it was happening, when I was sobbing like that the old Amy would have kind of pulled it together and stopped and been like, all right, you know, wait a minute, you know, I'm losing my, I'm losing it. You know, what did you, come on? She's okay. But what I did was I went right into it. I yeah. let myself really sob and just really, really feel it and yell at God and be like, why are you doing this to me? Like, you know, this, you know, this, whatever. Actually, I wrote some notes. I mean, I really said some pretty bad things, you know, like, you know, poor me pity party. Right. And, but, but I really went into it is what I'm getting at. I yeah. didn't kind of direct it or stop it or stuff it down. And that to me, that shows me some self growth that I did do at do that. Yeah, I think it says a lot about you. And I also think it says a lot for the practice itself. Yes. Like, I think the the difference of effigy is like in comparison to other breath practices, it's like, I'm not trying to be in control here. I'm trying to let it rip, like mm -hmm. let it rip, like create room for wailing, yeah. create room for squealing and squirming, create room for resistance. I always talk about this being an inclusive practice, like let all those thoughts in, let them in because better that they get let in than locked away in some room inside yourself that's just getting repressed and pushed down. And I feel like if there's anything that I've seen a million times over in facilitating this practice for thousands of people is permission. Permission to like let it out. Like I used to yeah. do a lot of classes in person mm -hmm. prior to the pandemic where a lot of um, men from the AA world would just end up in my classes and they were all coming through this one guy, but like in droves, these men would come and like hardened men who were trying to get their shit together and they would come and weep. And it was just Good. so beautiful because yeah. I think they just didn't know Feeling. the capacity to, to have that door open. To feel, let it out. It's so, it's so yeah. detoxing, cathartic and necessary so well, beautiful and i love what you were saying about your dad too it's like i don't totally i can't linearly put those two stories together but i know they're connected yeah weird it, right it's weird i think they are connected because of what it touches in you yeah it's about like how you get touched how you get moved into the world like how you process something it's like there's this external thing that's happening and then it beings on your system and then it goes into its own filtration and i think oh there's something about that experience that that allowed for the feeling door to open right it's like uh. oh that memory is like oh wow it was so visceral inside your body yeah just open some door i don't know why i think that's the mystery of a practice like this it's like okay. it's so mysterious like the things that come through i don't know why i don't i'm so know glad why. you said that because yeah they seem very disjointed to me yeah. and i'll add too that like where the hell did that memory come from and it didn't seem that significant you know i mean trust yeah. me there's been a lot more traumatic things that have happened to me than that but right. but it was just and but i think that's part of the beauty of it and the 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 the, the the interesting thing about it because it's like okay why that particular memory you know like all right that came out of nowhere but that wanted to come up you know 
Yeah, I think just like you talked about, I really felt it when you talked about like that, like sting of anger that came. Ah, uh huh. It's like oh, yeah. so visceral, right? It's like yep. do, just, just like oh, okay, that's mm-hmm. that's a capacity that you have to feel something so specific in the moment, right? Yeah. Yeah, really powerful. I'm so grateful that I did that class. And and again, I, I'm grateful that I took notes after and, 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 and I'll just say one last thing that I'm just, I find it so interesting now in retrospect after today, the, how this is now continuing and the timing. I mean, what are the odds, everybody? I mean, here, you know, Sarah and I planned this months ago and then just today I took Charlotte to the emergency room just this morning and we almost didn't do this recording. I mean, this could have been another guest right or whatever like it's just uncanny so in a weird way it almost gives me a sense of comfort sarah yeah there's something bigger going on and to call it the morphic field where we're all connected i don't know what it is but to me and i don't want to cry again but it feels like there's something that's bigger holding us all and almost like the god wink where it's like we we got you we we see yeah. you you know, you feel out of control and sad or whatever and scared and anxious, but, you know, we see you, we're holding you and, and, and we got you, you know, so yeah. it's comforting in that regard. Yeah. And I really, I hope you'll come and do it again. I, I, feel I, like- to- I made myself a note. I'm like, you know what, after this now, and now I'm like, okay, yeah, I got to definitely do this again. Yeah. yeah. And, and I just want to say it's because of your breath work that facilitated that, that whole thing, like everybody, this wouldn't have happened. You know, like without, because you, you have to have the opportunity to go into the unconscious, to give yourself the opportunity, because we don't live there in the day-to-day life. And you could be the most conscious person in the world. I think of myself as pretty mindful, you know, I mean, hell, it's what I do for a living, right? right? But still, I needed, you know, I need to book the space to take the class to, you know, be put in with a facilitator like Sarah or someone that can give me the opportunity to go there, right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah, And I just, just to say to you too, and for everybody listening, like, I almost think the second time you do it is even for lack of better words, better because you know, you can do it. It's like, you you know, you can get through the hour So when you go in, it's not this whole, like what's happening. Am I doing it? Am I doing it right? Oh my God. This is so intense. I don't think I can do it. But like all that stuff is like, you just know already, oh, I can do this. I'm just going to go in super full. So it's kind of like getting to the top of that hill comes mm-hmm. a, a little quicker the second time you do it. Awesome. Yeah. Sarah, how can people find about you and how they can take one of these classes even online? Yeah. So our website is effigybreath.com. It's E-F-F-I-J-I breath.com. If you go to our website, there's a way to I think the button says learn the technique. And if you put in your email address, you can get access to a couple of videos and that gets you um, onto our email list and gets you links into our classes. You can also find, uh, uh, I think there's a book or book your class button on our website too. Um, and that's when you go to that page, you can click on there and you'll be able to use your uh, discount code for the, from the podcast, from Amy's podcast here. Um, the, we do monthly classes. So it's usually the last Sunday of every month. We do our virtual online classes. If you are in Europe, usually that time zone works really well. If you are in uh, Asia or Australia type places, um, I've been trying to add classes that um, speak more to those time zones. So you can stay tuned for that. That is in the works. Um, you can find us on Instagram at Effigy Breath. Um, I, we are, you know, like anybody, we're self doing everything. So we go, go in spurts of posting stuff on there, but it's definitely a way to get in contact with me. If you need something, um, effigybreath at gmail.com. If you want to ask questions or if you have, um, just anything that didn't get answered for you today, please feel free to shoot me an email. All those emails go to me. Um, Facebook is facebook.com slash effigybreath. Yeah, pretty easy to find. <laughs> yeah, and you have an amazing coupon code people can enter, right? Which, thank you yeah. so much. You want to share with them what it is? Yeah, we're going to do 50% off of our class. And amazing. Amy, you'll have to remind me what the, what the code yep. is. We're doing Fit Amy TV 50. Yes. So it's F-I-T-A-M-Y TV 
5050. And Fit Amy TV is my Instagram handle, which is why ah. just at most of the anytime I do coupons, it's usually that. So we just like to keep it consistent. So Fit Amy TV 50 at checkout, you guys, and you can take the class for half off. I mean, come on. This yeah. is a no brainer. And we definitely want to know what you think. And you might see me in a class because I'm definitely, I took one of the Australian, that's why it was like a Friday or something really weird. Yeah. It wasn't the Sunday, but, uh, but I'm definitely taking another one and yeah. that'll be in the show notes, everybody. If you forget, or you're driving or whatever, don't worry. Um, and wow, Sarah Shermoli, thank you so very much. Are there any final words you want to share last thoughts you'd like to leave people with today? Oh, she put me on the spot. Um, yeah, I feel like, hmm. I'm super grateful for the opportunity to, to talk to you. It's always inspired like women in business. I'm always like, yeah, yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah. I love to uh, connect with you and be in support of you and your audience. And I just, I really hope that if any, anything and everything that it could have inspired you today, I hope that it brings you into the breath, brings you into your heart more and uh, yeah, don't do it by yourself. Get some help. That's great. Great advice. Sarah, what does awakening Aphrodite mean to you? How can we awaken Aphrodite in ourselves? Gosh, I mean, as soon as you said it, I feel like, oh, that feminine power. It's like, how do we get to be women and surrendered and open and powerful at the same time? I feel like what it means to me is like letting the power of mother nature just course through you and letting it reflect. Like you say, let it rip. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yes, indeed. I'd say we're aligned with our with our definition. All right, everybody, you know what to do. Sarah Shermoli, thank you so much. Eff Effigy breath work. That'll be in the show notes. Use that coupon code to save 50%. That's Fit Amy TV 50. And uh, I'll be seeing you in class. And we want to yeah. know what you think about it. And uh, enjoy the experience. Remember, surrender and go along for the ride with no expectations. Thanks so much, Sarah. And thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye. Would you like to support my mission to help empower people all over the world to be all of who they truly are? If so, please subscribe to the show, leave a review on iTunes, and share it with a friend. And if you're looking to take immediate action to align your energy and optimize your health, visit amyfournier.com. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite. Let's awaken her together in you. I'm your hostess, Amy Fournier, and I already can't wait to be with you again and for you to hear what I have planned for the next show. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. To learn more about Amy, check out her website, amyfournier.com. That's A-M-Y-F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R.com. You can also check out Amy's live and on-demand virtual fitness and yoga classes and sign up for her newsletter to receive a free mini ebook of three of her top tips for making holistic health a lifestyle. Again, that's amyfournier.com and get your ebook sent to your email immediately. Connect with Amy on the daily on Instagram at fitamytv, F-I-T-A-M-Y-T-V and watch many of the podcast episodes and subtopic clips on her YouTube channel, which is also Fit Amy TV. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite.